Hello, this is Paul with Logix Magazine. We help you go from self-taught beginner to automation professional. And the way we're going to help you do that today is we're going to help you understand how to survive at the client's job site. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So what do I mean by surviving at the client's job site? Well, you might be able to determine uh, that I mean it can be stressful, it can be challenging, it can be mind-blowing when on the job at the client's job site. And I'm going to help you understand some perceptions, some realities, some survival ideas, some survival tips, some priorities, things that you got to keep in mind. I want to help you really understand how to be successful while on the job at the client's site. All right, so let's get started. A couple of things to keep in mind is travel. And what I mean by that is that um, often when you have to go in, to the client site, you're going to generally get little to no notice uh, before you have to jump on a plane, on a train, in a car, whatever it takes to get to the job site. You're going to get very little notice often. Now, sometimes maybe you're the guy who's been answering the phone, trying to field questions for them, um, and you may know that something's coming up. But sometimes what happens there is the client just gets frustrated, can't follow your instructions, can't solve the problem, even though you, you basically have told them exactly what to do, exactly what to look for, and exactly how to do what, <laughs> what you're going to end up flying there or driving there to do they still are frustrated and they can't solve that problem. They're going to get on the phone. They're going to say, I want you here tomorrow. I want you here today. I want you here right now. Uh, and then what's going to happen is you're going to tell the boss or the boss is going to tell you, hey, you got to go. Let's keep this client happy. They're very important to us. And maybe it's not that the project that they're, they're calling you in for is a high dollar project now. But the prospect of doing large dollar amount of projects with them later on is real important. All right. So you're going to, as I say, get in the plane, train, automobile mode, and you're going to travel and you're going to get to the job site, probably often with little or no notice. Now, the thing to think about uh, when that happens is if, uh, if at all possible, do a little bit of overpacking. I went one day, um, it's supposed to have been just a one day trip. I ended up staying a couple of days. I had a one day, one set of clothes, and that's it. And the bad thing about it is I was working on a hydraulic system and I got oily. Uh, I got my clothes oily and I had nothing uh, new. I, I learned real quick. I think it was the, the next day I went to Walmart or Kmart and I bought a, a second set of clothes. These are the type of real world challenges you're going to face. All right. Um, it does happen. And it's okay. It's just part of the job. Just keep a up, stiff upper chin and, and you can get through this. It's not a big deal. All right. Um, that, if that's, that little thing challenges you, you probably shouldn't be on the road. Okay. So when you arrive at the job site, it's very important that before you get there, you get in a mindset that you are a professional. It doesn't matter how many years experience you have. You represent the company and the senior engineers that are back at a shop are there for, at your disposal, I hope, um, to answer the questions and help you be successful. You represent the company. So it's very important that you maintain a professional demeanor. I have arrived at the job site before where the manager was not happy at all. Um, I told we had, I arrived, we went to the conference room, we had a quick discussion. This all happened in minutes. I told him what I thought it would take a couple of days to get the job done. He blew his utter loving mind, okay? I mean, if there was stuff to throw, he would have thrown it. Uh, luckily, there wasn't nothing there to throw. Um, he told me to get off the job site, didn't want to hear from me, didn't want to talk to me or nothing. Now, mind your machine's still down, and me leaving didn't make it get up any faster. He got on the phone, I got on the phone. Um, ironically enough, we were calling back to my shop. And I shared with them what was going on. He must have shared with them. Anyhow, we both got back together. We talked about it. It didn't change the amount of time it took. But my boss was able to talk him down off the ledge verbally. Um, you know, 
not literally, but you know, just kind of off the ledge, get him calmed down, relaxed, that, that I would be there to solve his problem. I needed to act in a professional manner, which I did. I needed not to respond in kind. I needed to hold my composure while my, this, this gentleman was losing his ever-loving mind, all right? This is the type of thing that I really, this is the core of the purpose of this video. I've had it I, just today. I had a discussion with one of my clients, and and that's exactly what happened to him when he arrived in Costa Rica. It was a, it was a big poop show. Uh, people were getting all stressed and 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 losing their mind. And you have to maintain this composure, this professionalism. All right, no matter what's going on around you, the world might be burning down. It doesn't matter. You are a professional. You must maintain your composure. Even if you don't know the answer, it's very important that you do not say, I don't know. They are looking to you. Everyone is looking to you as the professional, as the expert, the person who's going to solve this problem. And you have to, by your, by your demeanor and composure and the words that you say, essentially convince them that you're going to solve the problem. You represent the company, your company, everything your, your company can bring to bear to help you solve that problem. I'm certain you can solve that problem. All right? You just have to stay calm. You have to stay professional. You cannot let the fact that everything around you is going to hell in a handbasket, that it's burning down, nothing's working the way it's supposed to, Maintain a, a level of calm and professionalism. If you do not know the answer, the phrase I use is, I'm going to work through the solution. Okay, I'm going to work to the solution. That is what I say. I do never say, I don't know. I never ever say, even if I don't know, I never say, I don't know. I say, I'm going to work to find that solution. I'm going to work to solve that solution. Okay, to, to, to get to that solution. I never say, I don't know, I have no idea at all. And I never tell a customer just, hey, hey, back off, leave me alone. I never say that. I stay calm. I try to get inside my head, inside the program, inside the machine, and try to understand the first step that I need to do. In, in this type of situation, right, the first most important thing you do is not try to dig into the program, try to run around back and forth. That's not what you want to do. The number one thing you want to do is calm down, take a few moments, get your composure, and consider what the very next step should be, the very first thing you should do in a calm state. Then go do that. And then you do that, and then you calmly think, what is the next step? And if you can think of two or three of them, and they sound logical, and you feel pretty confident this is the right steps, kind of write them down, think them through, and then work through those three, two, three. <clears throat> then do it again, and again, and again. And what you want to do is go slow. Take your time. Think things through. Don't be emotional. And be safe. For God's sake, be safe. All right? This is the exact phrase I tell myself all the time. I'm going to and tell my team and tell my clients, go slow. Take your time. Think things through. Make your list. And be safe. It's not worth not being safe. You're going to damage equipment or hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. Okay, it's very important that you, you this, this mantra is very important. Very important. When the world's burning down around you, and it will, just go slow. Take your time. Think it through and be safe. All right? The reason, the reason I emphasize this is because the customer and your boss, everyone's looking to you to solve the problem, all right? You are the expert. You are the professional. You are the one who's supposed to solve this problem for this client, okay? Your company and their 
their team is there to support you. When you get stuck, you're not sure, you need somebody to bounce ideas off, you need a little support, that's their role, okay? And I hope that you get with a company that performs in that manner. They're there to help you. They're your backup. When you get to a point where you get stuck, you're not sure, you need some support, some help, somebody, the secretary can make calls for you, can field calls for you, can send forward, back and forth emails for you while you're in there troubleshooting. They should be a resource for you. The key for you is to represent your company in a professional manner. And together, you and your company can solve any problem that your customer is going to face. But they have to believe, when they're going to judge whether you're going to be competent enough to solve that problem by the way that you act, the way that you speak, okay? And if you speak as a professional, they're going to look at you and perceive you as a professional. It might not happen at right away, but after they've calmed down a little bit in the situations and you're methodically moving through a process, they're going to, you're going to, you're going to give them a little calm, a little ease that I got somebody who's being very thorough, very methodical, working through the problem. You're not necessarily, you're not necessarily going to take all the stress away from them, but they're going to know that somebody who knows what they're doing is working on a solution and that's what you want and you did that purely by your demonstration not by a whole lot of words some words but not a lot just that you're going to work through the process you're going to find the solution you're going to solve the problem all right maintaining that high level of professionalism is, professionalism is very important when on in the field at the client's site it's very important, all right? I hope that this helps you. I hope that you get some insight as to the challenges at a client site and how you might be able to maintain your composure, why it's important. You might be a loud, boisterous, take it to the fence type of guy and, and, and pound it, your opponents. But in this situation, that's not what your, that's not your role. Your role is to be the professional. You're gonna take a lot of, of heat that's probably not even going to be yours to take. It's not your responsibility. You didn't cause it, but you are the professional showing up on site. There's nobody else there generally. It's you and you alone. And your job is to solve that problem. Make the customer happy and serve your, your employer. And you can do this if you go slow. Take your time. Think things through in a methodical process. And for God's sake, be safe. If you follow that little mantra and you tell that self, yourself that in, in your mind and you tell yourself that, you will be successful. You will be professional. And you will perform at a higher level than you ever thought possible. All right? So I hope this helps you. This is Paul with Logics Magazine. You guys, hey, keep programming, my friends. Till next time, this is Paul.